Previously, we explored the mysterious dwarves of the Atlas Mountains, a race that reportedly thrived in southern Morocco during the 19th century. According to an 1891 book by R.G. Halliburton, these dwarves were described as intelligent and skilled in various trades, from leatherwork to acrobatics. Living in both subterranean and mountainside dwellings, they traveled across Morocco, trading and performing at fairs. Their muscular, reddish complexion set them apart from the surrounding Berber, Moorish, and African populations. Despite their agility and skill, the dwarves gradually became rare, and by the late 1800s, their presence was mainly seen as a novelty at markets. Witnesses also claimed these dwarves were connected to ancient treasures, guarding hidden riches beneath ruins. The question remains, what happened to them? Did they retreat underground or suffer extinction? Intriguing names and titles given to these dwarves provide clues to their mysterious origins, some even linking them to biblical stories and ancient pagan traditions. Incredibly, the remnants of this nearly forgotten tribe were still alive just over 140 years ago, raising questions about their ultimate fate. Anyway, this is part two of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Luckily, the book tells us the exact locations of their dwellings. Akka, also called Vaka in ancient times, is the most named place and anyone can find it on Google Maps. I'll put a red pin there. Isn't it great to know exactly where the last of this mysterious race lived? This way, any adventurer can go there and will surely find traces of these people. The book is explicit of where they have dwellings, tribes, and towns. If you're a researcher of anomalous phenomena, you really appreciate books that are specific, which is a sign of honesty. These are all the place names from the book. The ones I found on Google Maps are in blue. Akka, Akairi, Akaigan, Gil, Idonali, Tamsrat, Tatakaust, Mountains of Kalis, Tazawalton Sioux, Tor, Ha, Shema, Draw Valley, Taminart, Headquarters, Ruins, Eight Tinker, Eight Souk, Eight Wobbly, Eight Shelter, Garnada, near Tin Zone, more than a thousand dwarves. Valley of Imini, southeast of Dra, Asa, Atomerbet, Tasca Yekanishit, Bani Yusi, River Dora, Daidu, Ado Ali, east of Demnat, 8 Mesad, Afran, 8 Messel, 8 Bensid, 8 Ada Country, Beni's Nasan Country, Tafalet or Tafalelt, Teradent in the Seuss Valley, Igwilnam in the Sahel. Bonnie Mountains southeast of Wadra, inside mountains southeast of Wadra, near Sakiat Hamra, Tubold, Olad Kader, Olad Habub, Malokas. Based on the towns I found, I was able to draw this direction's map on Google Maps. It gives us a good indication of where these people lived and where they didn't. One town I did not include in this is Torrid, because it's way off to the north, an anomaly among an otherwise consistent picture. Other places I was unable to include were Wadra and the mountains southeast of Wadra because they appear to be inaccessible by car. It would have been a good place for them to seclude themselves. The area is across country lines in Algeria. Wadra, spelled here Oedra, and the mountains southeast of the Dra Valley are the most frequently mentioned, but they appear also to be the most difficult to access. Mountains adjacent to a desert is a common theme with dwarves. The same thing is mirrored in many other places around the world. I once stated that they fled disaster into subterranean dwellings. Another theory I put forward, based on mythology, is that banishment into the underground was their punishment post-flood. In many places, the resulting disasters left vast stretches of barren desert. If there were mountains nearby, that's where survivors fled. As the dwarves themselves admitted, they were keenly interested in ancient treasures below the sand. In a previous videos I showed how the Sahara Desert was once a thriving green and populated place that had been destroyed by some type of advanced weaponry. I expressed the view that buried cities would be found there someday, as have already been. The dwarves knew what had happened. The Arabs, Berbers, and Europeans did not seem to remember, but the dwarves knew. Is this the reason they were eradicated? 
Is that why we found them living near the edge of the Sahara? Are they possibly among the last survivors of a world-changing war that also targeted the giants? Treasures of lost civilizations are rumored to be in the Draw Valley and along the 1,100 kilometers long Draw River. There was an ancient city called Tapant. It still exists in a modern version today, called Tabount. The ruins of Tapant are said to be three miles distant from the modern city, or as it was in the 1800s. The Arabs of the 1800s referred to the old Tabount as an ancient city of idolaters. The town was also called Anibnadido, translated as Town of Daidu. There, one can find many figures of people with the heads of horses, bulls, dogs, monkeys, wolves, etc., not entirely unlike the human animal crosses of ancient Egypt. These figures are 18 inches to 2 feet high, or 45 centimeters to 70 centimeters. The people call them Eight Beni, Beni Kerbu and Makarbu, as well as Eight Beni Hazer. At Tapant, there is a ruin called Abni Daidu, Temple of Daidu. There, dwarves were seen taking a statue of Isiri Daida down and lifting him back up with a rope as a matter of ritual. An old saying in the region regarding prosperity is, you have all the gold of Pont. Naturally, if the dwarves were idol worshippers, it makes sense that they keep secluded from the religious and it could very well be the reason they disappeared. Looking at Tabound on Google Earth, I see some possible evidence of a new city being built atop a more ancient one. I've gone into this phenomenon in the video about ancient grid lines of the desert. I may be wrong, but these areas in and around about look potentially anomalous. These look like property lots, lines and streets have been prepared but not built on yet. It's how new developments start, except they look weathered, obviously made long ago. In this part of town, the streets are all ready, according to Google, but the rest looks like it's been destroyed. Here's something mind-blowing. The dwarves were often specifically referred to as the acrobats, and also as people who build dwellings from clay. The ceilings of some of their dwellings inside mountains are no more than 5.2 foot high, according to the book. In America, there are some people who say that certain cave dwellings were not built by the Native Americans, but rather an even older people, the dwarves. These dwellings in the desert mountains are called adobe, or clay. That gives a whole new meaning to adobe acrobat doesn't it? The dwarves of Morocco called their ancestors the Romi. That's noteworthy, considering that many of the buried ruins indeed look Roman. There are also possible crossovers to the gypsies of Europe that call themselves Roma and share some customs with these dwarves. One place of subterranean treasures, according to the book, was Amsmiz, a small town at the northern foot of the Atlas Mountains, specifically a place in the mountains above Amsmiz called Imantella. Today it's called a Mismis. I found a place named Imantala on Google Maps and a few very interesting photos of what look like entrances to mountain dwellings. Imantala is ancient German ford in the valley. These are photos shot by a private person and uploaded to Google. I found no other photos of the area online. There are frequent references to ancient ruins and buried cities southeast of Draw River. That would be an area that is unfortunately a UN-monitored political buffer zone in Western Sahara. It is said of this area that it contains many prehistoric sites of archaeological interest, but the terrain is quite difficult to access. Generally, the entire Bonny Mountain Range, anti-Atlas, was said to belong to the dwarves, whereas the Atlas Mountain Range also had dwarf tribes but less so. If you find this video interesting, I look forward to seeing you in part 3.